Welcome, everybody. My name is Julie, and this is another episode of Slow Secrets. And today we are going to talk about intimacy. So more specifically about shibari, which is a Japanese underground erotic art of uh, bondage. And I have experienced a deep emotional release uh, that is also linked to my trauma healing. So I have invited today Eva uh, to speak about that together. Welcome Eva, and thank you so much uh, for being willing to share something so intimate with uh, our audience. So I want thank to- Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. So I wanted to um, speak about uh, the biggest emotional uh, blockage that um, we have been able to overcome, thanks to Shibari. Uh, that's, it's a very personal thing um, for everybody, I think. Um, not everybody goes into Shibari thinking about overcoming trauma and that's how it was for me I just kind of fell into this shibari community and then I realized wow there's stuff happening to me on the inside when I put myself in this position and over time I realized that it's for me it was really about trust about creating the trust that I give the other person to tie me and put me into a state of complete surrender. And really it was this letting go and surrendering, being tied and suspended by another person. And that translated for me into real life and into everyday life, like just surrendering to life, letting it go, feeling the tension of life and then letting it go, feeling the push and pull, feeling the pain and the release. All of that is going on in Shibari and it translates directly into life yeah for me and certainly trusting men <laughs> <laughs> and trusting That's life and trusting men <laughs> yeah which which then essentially goes back to trusting myself right so yeah. that blockage was released um it just was there, there's there were moments in this altered state of consciousness that you go in when you're in a in a full on flight or floating stage yes. where I could actually feel the release of this this tension for life. I could feel the trust that I put in the rigor. I can feel the trust that I put in myself, putting myself in the situation and mm -hmm. knowing it will all work out fine. So yeah. yeah. This yeah. was a big one for me. Like it really it really made me connect with a very deep and inner self. Like I really, yeah. I really saw myself like the deepest part of myself, like through this physical pain, I accessed this really deep emotional pain and I was completely vulnerable. But the message for me really was that in that moment, vulnerability was really, really sexy. It was really like the purest form of intimacy that I had experienced with myself since a very, very long time. And also uh, allowing myself to be fully seen, I think was a big one for me. As a woman? Yeah, as a, or as a person. As just as myself, I think um, we wear a lot yeah. of masks, you know? because you, you're working and then you're yes. in a social event and then you're speaking with someone and then, but when are you really truly 100% your true self? Yeah, of course we aspire to always be uh, our true self, but when are we really, you know? And especially with someone that you've just met, you know, because yeah, I don't know this person just yet. I'm not gonna like fully, and this, he just completely saw me, like all of me. Like, like he was communicating through the ropes or something. It was really a revelation for me. He looked at me and he said, wow, when I was talking to you on the table and the person I have on the mat are very different, you are actually very sensitive 
and you hide it, which I understand because it must have been painful in some moments. I didn't, I didn't even speak more than 10 minutes with him and he saw all of that just by the movement and the whole situation. Because there is, yeah, I think a form of uh, communication through the ropes somehow. Yeah. Oh, it is. Of course. I mean, a good, a good rigger pays attention to every move that the bunny makes, depending on where and how he puts the rope around the body, right? Yeah. At least that's my experience being tied. You can really tell if a rigger is sensitive to your movements and to your comfort. It's that, yeah, yeah it's like communication. And I, I feel like Shibari is so much about communication beforehand, during the session, even though you might not be able to talk sometimes, but it's about communicating your comfort or your discomfort, more most likely your discomfort. Yeah. And at the same time, the rigor, when you have some discomfort or the rope is somewhere to really be very precise, like where is it uncomfortable and what do I need you to do right now to put me back into a comfortable position? And yes, to leave his plan for a second and attend to your need again yeah. and then switch back and forth. It's, it's quite a, it's very intricate communication that is happening in Shibari. It's fascinating. Yeah. 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 I, I also, I was wondering like with the boundaries, like, are you meant to be pushing these boundaries? Because I feel like sometimes I really push my boundaries and it hurts. But then if I wait just a little longer, it's like my body, you know, like eases into the pain and then I get through the pain and it's like this door open. I'm fine, you know? Like it doesn't hurt anymore. And then somehow he sees it and then he adapts to it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like a, it's almost like a partnership, like really. Um, but is it also the oh, I feel point? like you go into marriage for the time being. It's like <laughs> <a marriage. laughs> you get married for that session. You have to give each other full attention. You have to talk about what are the boundaries. You go into this, you go into the session, you you communicate, and then you go out of the session with tender love and care. It's like a short-term marriage yes. <laughs> of some sort. Yes. Um, it's the, I mean, I'm such an yeah. expert. Yes. I mean, I am. I think what you what you said about um, the boundaries, yes. your personal boundaries, and e like easing into the discomfort, is a, a really big thing, right? And this really, this is what's going on inside of yourself, and that's what happens when you're tied as a bunny. You have the chance to feel inside, like what is going on, what's going on in my body, what's going on in my mind. Does this hurt? Does this not hurt? Do I say something? Do I not say something? And then you kind of ease into the discomfort and then it's not so uncomfortable anymore. And it really teaches you about endurance also, yes. but also, okay, now this really hurts. Now I really need to communicate it because my foot's about to just <laughs> fall off. <laughs> <laughs> and then to actually communicate it, yeah. hopefully before it gets to that extreme discomfort. Yes, yes, yes. To give the rigor also some time to, to adapt. It's, um, it, yeah, it's huge. It's about knowing your own boundaries and then also communicating your boundaries to the rigor. Still have your boundaries pushed most of the time. Yeah. And somehow that all comes together and it's a pleasant experience for both. It's quite fascinating. It's yeah. amazing. It's amazing. I mean, when I push those boundaries and, and then eventually I... I land back on that mat. It's like, I don't know, I'm standing, you know, on this river and there's a version of myself that's really, really broken and is just communicating all the emotional pain I have. And, and this other version of myself that's like hugging her and, and seeing her and then, and then letting it go, you know, floating down the river. I, I mean, I had this huge moment I mean, with myself, <laughs> which was much needed because, um, yeah, I've just, I've been through a lot of trauma 
uh, for a couple of years now since the devastating earthquake here. And uh, I, I just accumulated mm -hmm. so much that I, I started feeling numb. So mm -hmm. especially yeah. pain. So I just started kind of locking out the pain completely. Um, and through the physical pain, somehow I've managed to access that little door to this emotional pain where I can finally, you know, feel again. And I can finally, like I, I cried the other day, which had been at least seven months or a bit longer that I haven't cried, you know? So yeah, and it's really thanks to that. So for me, it's like therapy almost. It's like, it feels like a form of therapy. So how can pain feel so sensual and how can bondage feel so freeing? It does. You it know does. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I think there's, there's different layers also to this and what you were saying earlier about that release, you know, when the session has finished, you have all this dopamine coming into your body, right? I mean, there's, you're getting a hormonal cocktail that is quite intense. You have the cortisol for fear, and then you have dopamine and serotonin. I mean, it all comes with the push and pull dynamic, right? You, you don't know what's going to happen to you. You don't know what the rigor is going to do to you. And then he's doing something that might hurt or give you discomfort and then he's easing it again. So it's like a constant hormonal cocktail and it's quite tense. And once he or she, whoever is tying you releases you, it's like this moment of letting go and just, just I mean, happy hormones are just flooding into your body and they're giving you this experience you know and it's it opens your mind it opens your consciousness because it is triggered by hormones that's what that's what our mind does you know and it's amazing to find that space inside of yourself inside of your own mind that helps you release trauma through tension that is building up in the body that is then being released yeah. Which, if you really, if you really think about it, animals do it all the time. You know, when an antelope is being chased by a tiger, <laughs> she will run away and be really tense. But once she has managed to escape, she looks around and then she will just shake it out and then go and eat some grass if there is any. <laughs> that, that's what that's what animals do. They shake it out. Dogs shake it out. I mean, even cats shake and stretch it out. We as humans, we don't really do that. So with shibari to put yourself into such a tense position and then to actively and consciously connect your body discomfort or the body tension with the tension in your brain and to then release it during the session and especially after the session is so powerful that's what trauma work is all about you know yeah. connecting the dots and then just giving it space to release let it come up and release yes it's Oh, I get so excited talking. Yeah, it's so like, nice. <laughs> I mean, I did a lot of the EFT, which uh, which has helped yeah. me a lot. Um, yeah, so I mean, trauma is something I'm also fascinated about, obviously because of my experience with it. And uh, yeah, so I'm I'm really happy we're talking about this together. <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, I do, this, <laughs> I do this with um, I. I teach trauma-informed yoga and I combine it also with meditation. It's, it's the same thing, you know, you sit with the pain, you evaluate the pain and you, you don't push it away. You have to face it and you have to feel it. And then you do exercise. Is that where you're combining this pain you, and it's so powerful. It's, yeah, the concept seems logical and I really feel like we need to spread the word on this. Absolutely. As therapists yep. to just, you know, let people know it's, it's mind over matter really is what it is. Absolutely. It's so simple and powerful. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. Um, so like I have a big question, obviously, in my mind is how does the rigor actually feel? Because as a bunny, oh. I can kind of evaluate what I feel, but... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know if you're the right person to ask this to, but um, 
I, do you tie? You don't tie at all. No, right? not yet. No, no. I am a no. beginner. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just started, but it fascinates me. It, it is fascinating. So I don't tie either. I do BDSM, like, you know, like impact play and vlogging. So I know how to use toys on other people and cause, I guess, considerable discomfort that way. Um, but I don't tie. So, but I know what my rigor feels. <laughs> I know what he's thinking about because I asked him. And um, I have asked pretty much all the rigors that I've had uh, to a certain extent. Why do they do it? What do they feel? You know, like, why is this something that they are attracted to? And um, across the board, but especially with my rigor right now, it's, it's really this feeling of being the leader, being in charge and having power, a very masculine way of acting. And yeah. for me as well, it's this game between the genders that is really actually, we kind of lost it in society. You know, we're kind of morphing into like one sex. And in Shibari, especially for the men, I mean, they can feel they're in charge, you know, they're like, the woman is surrendering, if, if that is the constellation, yeah, if it's man and woman, it could be any other constellation, but yeah, my rigor also said that he likes possessing me, like he likes to know that I'm like his object, and he can do with me whatever he wants in that setting, and he appreciates that I'm giving myself to him so freely, and so openly, and so vulnerable, yeah, And he loves being masculine in the setting. He loves to not be shamed by me as the woman and the bunny for being too hard or for being too this or for being too that because the communication is very open, honest and respectful mm -hmm. other than in most relationships, I guess. Yes, yes absolutely. So, yeah, he could just completely enjoys that and appreciates that to step into these traditional gender roles for the time being without judgment from society, without judgment from other females and other women. And it makes him feel free to be a man. Yeah. And I feel I think that is very, very powerful. And I can complete I'm not a man, but I can completely understand that because for me as a woman, I feel the same way in reverse. I like to be feminine I like to be conquered I like to be possessed I like to be taken as the object that I'm putting myself out there as yep. and he's taking care of me and he is I mean a good rigor really knows how to take care of you he makes yes. you the center of his universe and then he's 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 gentle and adapts to your femininity but then he will be masculine and do something that is pushing boundaries and then he will go back and forth and back and forth and like Oh my God, I wish it was like that in real life. You know, yes. I wish the kind of relationships in real life where a, a man can be himself as a man and a woman can be herself as a woman. Yeah. So I, I agree with him. When I asked my regular, he said, I just feel free to be a man. And I'm like, I feel free to be a woman. I'm like, enough said, you know, this yeah. is, it's wonderful. So you know, what do you think? <laughs> what do riggers well, think when you're tired about me? <laughs> For me, um, I'm a, a control freak. Yeah. So, um, it, 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 yeah, it's really interesting. It's really, really interesting. So for me, the, 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 the fact that I'm completely surrendering and giving up control feels extremely freeing somehow. Yes. Like, oh, you know, it's just, it's this complete surrender and, and I let it all go and, it makes me feel so good. And I trust him. He makes me feel safe. And I mean, I don't think anyone has ever touched me that sensually in my entire life. And on the other hand, I don't think I've ever been spanked that hard in my entire life. <laughs> I think... Um, to me, uh, that's kind of my side of the story. And um, he told me 
one day in one of our conversation, uh, he said, I am not uh, a sadist. So I don't, uh, you know, experience pleasure in inflicting pain to anyone, but I am in it uh, for the emotional part, which, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. which made me feel very safe uh, when he yeah. said that to me. And then, uh, during the the whole uh, session, I, I really felt that. Um, I really felt that, okay, the spanking and then the flogging was quite interesting, but also, I mean, this whole story with the ropes, it's so poetic, you know? And yeah. pushing and pulling the boundaries and then the erotic touch to it. But then the really the part where you like come down on the mat and you feel one rope, at a time, I really mm -hmm. felt like he was taking some of my emotions with it, you know? Yeah, he absolutely. All on me. And then he, he like uh, cuddled me. I don't know, like, honestly, like I'm such an aftercare junkie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but apparently I also like pain, but that was well, one of the best aftercare that. of my life. I was like, can I just like introduce you to all my male friends? Because you need to do like a general workshop for the whole male population, you know? <laughs> we should do that. We should, yes. we should totally do that. It's totally what I want to do. Like there is an understanding also of the female body that I have never experienced before. Like I'm absolutely communicate it, but yeah, I think um yeah, it's it blew my mind. Yeah. So yeah. what about the rigor? One more is faithfulness <laughs> even a question? I mean, <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> um, for me personally, I actually like to stick with one rigor, yeah. um, pre preferably. I, for me, this is, for me, Shibari is the perfect mirror to, to how I feel in, in everyday life as well. I prefer to stay with one rigor. Having said that, nothing wrong with being tied by somebody else every once in a while. Yeah. Uh, just, just to be reminded how good you have it with your number one rigor, maybe. <laughs> um, I think there is, um, there, there's a, you can build deeper trust if you have chemistry with your rigor and it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, but I feel like for me, that gives me an extra kick. Like if I have some kind of romantic chemistry with my rigor, it makes it even more playful and more interesting. Yeah. And then tying with somebody who at the same time is really just a friend or a new rigor that just kind of wants to, you know, try it me as a bunny it's it's also satisfying but I really like to be faithful to my number one rigor and give him all the freedom that he wants yeah. I have less boundaries with him than I have with somebody else who ties me yeah. um yeah so yeah what do you think how's it how's that for I, you? um I feel the same way so I feel like a really deep connection with him and uh but i also feel like yeah we're we're doing sessions and it's pretty addictive huh like the first time i did oh. it I <laughs> get back i was like oh my god but <laughs> i i i don't like i i don't have an addictive personality and so if i feel any addiction i'm gonna step i'm gonna take a step back and i'm gonna ease into it because i really wanna mm -hmm. i wanna process everything in a slow way because I really I don't want to miss anything you know like I'm going to write about it I'm going to read about it I'm going to understand what happened and then I'll go back but I mean he's in Bali I'm in Gili so it, there is also a geographical advantage or disadvantage <laughs> yeah so, so I don't um, yeah so we see each other when I'm in Bali which is every two three weeks and um it's really nice. Uh, I don't think I'd want to go with someone else because I just feel safe and comfortable and I feel like it's a process one thing at a time. Um, and yeah, I'm not done with that process yet. I do 
I do know that uh, he probably sees a, a whole lot of other bunnies. So yeah, but that's fine. That's totally I mean, that's, fine. It, yeah, it's that's fine, yeah. right? I, no, totally fine. I think yeah. everyone has to do whatever they feel. You know, everything is valid. Yeah. And whatever happens. Yeah, I. I would not. Like in my world, I don't want to deprive somebody else of their human experience. So I really translate that freedom that I give my rigor, I'm not giving it to him. He just has it. I'm not saying, oh, hey, here, I give you the freedom to die with somebody else. It, he, he just has it. It's not even a question for me. It's really um, interesting, the relationship, right? The, the, the rigor usually has more bunnies, right? But the bunny, bunny, I mean, you and yeah. me, I, anyway, the two of us kind of stay faithful to one. It's interesting. Yeah, and, and you, do you see do you see the mirror to the traditional male female role? I mean, the men men normally go out and they have several women, which again for me is totally fine. Like here, have your freedom, you know, go tie, go, go have fun. I know you need to, I don't know, spread your glory. Um, I don't need that most yeah, of the time. Like I'm just like, it's okay, I can just be yours. And I'm finding that interesting in interpersonal relationships, Beautiful. especially in romantic relationships, as much as in Shibari, like it, it, it puts an extra quality. I think a rigor or a man actually kind of appreciates having that kind of freedom without having the woman do the same. I think so. You, again, you, you yeah. also have that freedom, but you choose not. I choose not but to you have it. Yeah, I choose you know, not it's, it's, yeah, beautiful. of course, of course. Yeah. I'm, I'm free to do whatever content. I want. I just, I just don't. And yeah, exactly. Funny, I had a conversation just the other day, like, oh, why don't you just go out and date other, other guys? And I'm like, because I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to bother with it. It's too time consuming. I, yeah. you know, if I want, if I want to have sex or I want Shibari or I want, you know, something else, I know exactly where to go. Yeah. And as that person fulfills my needs for the time being I don't need to do anything else like oh but then the whole conversation went a little bit into oh but then um is it not okay for me to do the same I'm like no 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 this has nothing to do with you this is my choice yeah everything is I'm, communication you know, yeah so go out and do your thing yeah whatever things you can do. change and also I mean things can change you communicate and yeah. there you go, you know, then you reevaluate, then maybe you move into a different way, just like a Shibari session or a flight plan, you know, Absolutely. you communicate it and maybe it doesn't go the way it's supposed to go because the toe doesn't go into the nose or, <laughs> and then you, you have to reevaluate like, okay, this isn't working. Now we need to change it up. And yeah. yeah. So now that I think about it, really this, this was one of these emotional blockages that also got released, like the interconnectivity. I really experienced interconnectivity through Shibari. Like this is like life and it's all connected. Everything we do, everything that we have as tools in the universe to live our human experience, it's all the same principle. It's Absolutely. all, I mean, it's such a, Oh, oh, we're all connected. I mean, that's such yes, a we are. To say. Yeah. <laughs> but 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 we are, and it is. Um, everything is a mirror of everything and everybody. So, yeah, that was a revelation. <laughs> I think yeah. When I stepped into this whole world, I I I truly accepted myself. You know, I was like, okay, I yeah. I want to do this, and and I feel like this is my path. And since I'm doing these sessions, I feel like the masks are just dropping, you know? Yeah. I'm just truly just being myself. Yeah. It's like the conditioning falls away. It's like you, you go into these sessions, you never know what happens, and then you're faced with whatever comes up and you release it and you broke through another barrier of finding your like your truth or your authentic self right yeah. and life is life changes when you start on that path it's 
it's incredible. I mean, if you would have told me that this is what Shibari bondage does to some people, I would have been like, yeah, maybe you need psychotherapy or something. You can only go to put... psychotherapy, go to Shibari. <laughs> yes. You can only put your finger on it once you've tried it, right? I mean, something somebody would have told me this before would have been like, what? But now I've tried it and I'm like, what? It's like, everybody should do this at least once in their life, you know? <laughs> Why didn't they tell us this before? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I sometimes I show my photos to people or I have my my Shibari Instagram account which some of my more conservative friends kind of started looking into like oh my god what are you doing I'm like it's amazing you should try it and they're like well, that looks painful and I'm like yes it is it's great <laughs> you should try it it's painful <laughs> <laughs> well, great. I think to close, maybe you could give um, just three action points to the people or some advice if anyone would try want to try Shibari. Well, get in touch with your local Shibari community and just, just give it a try. Just do it. And don't put limitations on yourself. Don't have any expectations. Go into it with an open mind. And just see what happens. You don't have to go back. And to see what to, to see what happens. Let let the magic of Shibari unfold. And if it's not for you, then it wasn't for you. Then nothing nothing happened, right? Except for you trying something new. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. And um, if the audience would like to connect with you, uh, where can they find you? Right now, the best way to contact me is on my Instagram. It's uh, that underscore healing underscore heart. And yeah, all my information is on there, what I do and where I am. And yeah, I'm always happy to connect with people. So give me a well, shout. <laughs> thank you so much for uh, sharing your magic thank with you. us. Because we love unique angles and... We love people who, th who do things differently and um, yeah, refuse to follow the pack. And I think um, these things have to be talked about. So it's a safe space um, to share our experiences. Yeah, let's put it out there. Yeah. Let's get more people on the boat, on the Shibari yes. boat. <laughs> okay, well, I wish you a beautiful day. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Julie. Lots of love from the island. Mwah. Lots of love from the other island. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Slow secrets.